Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. Today we're going to take a peek at what I guess you could call an electronic accessory. This device is commonly called a time delay relay. They only cost a few bucks each, and they're usually found in 5 volt and 12 volt configurations. I've seen quite a few sellers on AliExpress, which is where I purchased these from, but Marlin P. Jones, Banggood, eBay, and I'm sure lots of other online outlets sell the same basic design. So what is it exactly? And how does it work? And why might you need one of these things? Well, I can tell you this. If you're a do-it-yourselfer like me who likes to dabble with Bluetooth table radios or stereos and amplifiers, that kind of stuff, you might need this little device and not even know it. But let's answer these questions in order. First of all, what is it? Well, put simply, it's a small self-contained circuit board, which, when a voltage is applied, activates a timer function. And basically, when the timer runs out, it turns on a relay, which creates continuity between two terminals. So, basically, it's a switch, but instead of flipping the switch with your finger, you use a timer and a little bit of electricity. Here are the dimensions. They're the same for the 5-volt and the 12-volt boards. So go ahead and pause this if you'd like to jot them down. So, how does it work? The brain that makes this device so useful is the Texas Instruments NE555 microchip, which controls the time delay portion of the board. So it's this chip that determines, via the potentiometer, how long the delay is. So you can adjust the length of time between when power is applied to the board and when it actually turns on the relay. That adjustment is done with this tiny screw here. And it's adjustable from basically instant on to about a 10 second delay. You can extend the delay to a longer duration if you change out the capacitor, but for most purposes, a 10 second delay is probably enough. It's actually pretty interesting how this chip works, but it's also a little complicated. So if you're curious and you want to learn a little bit more about the Texas Instruments NE555 timer chip, I'll put a few links down below to some videos that describe how it functions in greater detail. Interesting side note, as I was doing some research for this video, I, mm, Actually, if you're a side note, you shouldn't be here. You should be over there on the side, okay? Okay, right. Like I said, while researching for this video, I discovered that the chip was actually designed the year I was born, in 1971. So, yeah, it's been around a while. Anyway, before I do a little demo of the board in action, let me show you how it functions with this little animation that I put together. The voltage comes in on the right side here. 12 volts DC in this case. Once the board is powered up, the timer chip starts doing its thing. Like I said, it works in conjunction with this adjustable trim pot to set the length of the delay. Turning the screw clockwise increases the amount of delay, and turning counterclockwise or anti-clockwise decreases the delay. Once the set time is reached, the chip sends voltage to the relay which turns it on and creates a connection between the center common terminal and the top on terminal. The relay is basically a switch that can be used to turn on pretty much anything you want. The center and top terminals have continuity only while the board is in the on position. And I should note that the delay function is only for the turn on part of the switching operation. As soon as power is cut, these two terminals no longer have continuity. Notice that there are three terminals on the switching side of the board. When the board is not receiving power, the common terminal and the bottom off terminals have continuity. So the middle and the bottom terminals are connected when the board is either totally powered off or when the board is receiving voltage but not yet in the on position. Basically, as soon as the relay turns on, the two lower terminals disconnect and the top two terminals connect. You don't have to use the bottom terminal, obviously, but it's nice that there's that option. Well, let me give you a demonstration. I've mounted one of these boards here up on this test rig with some labels for clarity. Here's the board. Now I'm going to plug in 12 volts from my power supply. And let me just explain what's going on here. This thick uh, blue line here comes from the 12 volt negative. That runs under the board just to keep things tidy. It comes out here and goes into this terminal here. This is the 12 volt input because this is a 12 volt relay board. They also come in 5 volts. This positive line goes down here to this single pole single throw switch 
and comes out here. So basically you have 12 volts coming in here to supply power to the board. Now what's going to happen is when I turn the power on, the volt comes in, it sends it, it turns on the chip. The chip based on the input from the potentiometer will count down when it times out, you see the blue light come on, it activates the relay. And then when the relay is activated, we go from having continuity between this middle common terminal and the bottom terminal to having continuity when it's powered on to this middle common terminal and the top terminal. So you can see this light lights up when the board is active and there's continuity between the middle and the top one. And when I turn the board off, there's continuity between the middle common and bottom inactive terminal. And it's kind of cool because you can you can actually light up two different things if you want to. I just used uh, this apparatus and I borrowed voltage from the 12 volt coming in from the power supply just to make my life easier but I'm afraid I might it might be just a little bit confusing and if it is I apologize for that. But basically what's happening is the 12 volt negative comes in here feeds the negative terminal of both LEDs then the top LED goes to a limiting resistor to the top terminal which is active. The bottom LED goes through a limiting resistor to the bottom terminal which is the inactive and the 12 volts positive comes in the middle common. Now you don't have to switch LEDs, it doesn't have to be 12 volts. It can be up to 10 amps and it could be 30 volts, AC, uh, 30 volts DC up to 250 volts AC at 10 amps. So this, these terminals will switch all kinds of stuff, anything you can think of that fits within the specifications here. It doesn't have to be lights. But I just thought I would demonstrate it with lights to try to illustrate and make it easy to understand. So again, I'll turn the switch on, 12 volts come in, the timer is timing based on the input from this. When it times out, it tells the relay to turn on, the blue light comes on, and then it switches continuity between the bottom two and the top two terminals. Now this delay can be adjusted with this potentiometer and this very very small screw here. I'll turn the unit off to demonstrate it and what I'm going to do is you, sh you tighten clockwise to increase the length of the time. You loosen counter or anti-clockwise to decrease the length of time. So let me turn it on and we'll see how long of a delay before it switches on. Okay that was still pretty long. So let me unscrew it some more see if we can get it to turn on faster let's try it again okay that was a little quicker let me unscrew some more this is a multi-turn potentiometer let me try it again Oop! turned on immediately actually so let me turn in a few more turns Oops. It's a very, very small straight edge screw there. So let me try it again. Okay, there you go. So that's a delay of about oh, a bit over a second. Something like that. But you can see this is adjustable from about instant on to roughly 10 seconds or so. And if you change this cap out, you can actually get the delay to last for not just seconds, but minutes. So that's basically how it works. Now, why would you ever need something like this? Or maybe even though you're just learning about these devices, you might have some ideas swirling around in your head of what you could do with something like this, just like I did when I first learned about them. Well, here's one scenario that you may run into if you're making a table radio, which is the reason that I purchased a few of them myself. Well, say you've picked out a nice faceplate preamp unit that you want to use for your radio. But of course, you're also going to need a separate amp board to amplify the signal and power the speakers. Now, most of these preamp boards come with a remote control that you can use to turn it on. But how do you turn on the amplifier board? That's the problem with most of these things. There's no way to turn an amplifier on. Well, how would you turn the amplifier on in this situation? Well, how I've usually accomplished this is with a nice switch on the top like I used on this radio that I made several years back. I used the remote control to turn the preamp on and then I have to use the separate push button on the top to turn the amplifier on. It's a push button switch that glows blue when it's turned on. It cost me a few bucks 
it's a nice switch with a quality feel to it and I do like switches but it's turned the operation of turning this radio on into a two-step process when it would be actually much nicer just to do it with one press of the button but if you use one of these timer relay boards you could turn on the whole shebang with just one button you'd have to tap into the preamp somewhere to find a solder point that has a voltage only when the units turned on but many preamp boards have USB sockets for playing music and that would get you your 5 volts to power on this time delay relay board right there And if you don't have an obvious USB socket to tap into or you're using the 12 volt option you might have to do a little probing here and there to find a good stable voltage tap to power this up with remember you want a voltage source that switches on and off with the preamp of course while I'm talking about tapping into a preamp board to bar some voltage I should note that this device does draw a little bit of current as far as I can tell the 5 volt unit draws around 60 milliamps with the relay activated and the 12 volt unit draws about 30 to 40 milliamps with the relay activated surprisingly when they were initially powered up before they clicked on neither one of these actually drew enough milliamps to register on my RMS voltmeter another big reason to put a delay on powering up an amp board is that many of these preamp faceplate units can be a little noisy when they first turn on now you may have experienced this yourself if you've dabbled around with Bluetooth radios and stuff like that you turn the radio on and you get sort of a whooshing sound or a pop or a click or a few times actually I've actually seen some DC offset but when you turn the preamp on the speakers will actually just push out for like a second or two before they go back to rest and that's obviously not good and it's something you want to avoid and using a timer relay like this on the amplifier and giving this a few seconds to settle down and finish doing its startup stuff before you turn the amplifier itself on probably be a really good idea if you've used one of these boards in the past or have an idea on an application it might be well suited for why don't you leave a comment below I'd love to read it well I hope you enjoyed today's overview of the time delay relay board I plan to implement one of these in a future project so stay tuned for that well, that's it for today Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.